Hallelujah. Not only do I think that Jennifer Kent's long-awaited follow-up to The Babadook is amazing, I also think it might be one of the most essential Australian films that I've ever seen. Alright, so some of you may remember in 2014 there was this little horror film that seemingly came out of nowhere known as The Babadook. If you have not seen it, I am going to recommend it. It is one of my favourite horror films in recent years and it's Australian made, so that gets extra points for me. But this movie kind of came out of nowhere from this director that we hadn't really heard of before. And now for the last five years... We've been waiting to see what was coming next. What does she do next? And now she is finally delivered with The Nightingale. The Nightingale stars Aisling Frankozy, Sam Claffin, and Baykali Ganimbar in this absolutely harrowing, bleak, violent, and disturbing look into colonial Tasmania in which one woman goes on a quest for revenge. And I... I <sighs> I still feel kind of defeated by this movie. Like I saw this a couple of days ago now and I can't get it out of my head for a number of reasons. Look, Jennifer Kent proved to me years ago that she had this X factor as a writer and director. There was something about the Babadook that was like, I don't think I've really seen Australian films made in Australia that have this particular voice, have this level of... I, I hate using the term gritty, but this incredibly harrowing, intense, and yet incredibly stylish and creative approach to telling stories about what is essentially a r really universal thing. The, the Babadook is a movie that explores grief and suffering and, and the pain that you feel going through those things and how horrifying it can feel. And the movie absolutely nailed that for me. And I can only see, like, that has only been consolidated with The Nightingale. This is a hard movie to watch. You probably know this is the movie that a ton of people walked out of because they couldn't, they weren't a big fan of the way it depicts certain parts of its content. And here's the thing. For me, that intensity is the very reason the Nightingale is so phenomenal. See, here's the thing, and I do want to keep this semi-vague because I went into the movie not really even knowing what the catalyst of the story was, so I do want to kind of let that shock you as it happens. But this movie depicts a lot of rape and murder and other depraved things. And I think what so many people fail to understand is that you cannot make a movie about those things, about human atrocities, and have it be a pleasant viewing experience. If I watch a movie with a rape scene and I don't feel disgusted by it, that movie has most likely, a shoot, like it has most likely failed at what it's trying to do. Unless it is being brushed off as a character element that's gonna be addressed later, if it is the driving force of the story, if the movie is about depicting the horrors that humans are able to commit, if it's about depicting an incredibly disgusting time in a country's history, if it's about facing up to those horrors, you cannot shy away from them, you cannot make them palatable because it defeats the purpose. And the Nightingale does not shy away from those things. It makes them as filthy and vile and, and absolutely abhorrent as possible. It is hard to watch. It makes you feel queasy and gross. This is a revenge movie and vengeance is never a satisfying thing. There is no catharsis to come from it. It remains this depraved cycle of violence. There's no gratification in that, that bloodletting. There's this drive for revenge and we feel it. We feel this character's drive. We feel their need to get back at the people that wronged her. But along the way, violence just slowly becomes worthless. It becomes, we see the, the emptiness of it. We see the the apathy and i think that's where this movie absolutely excels in the way that jennifer kent is exploring empathy taking two characters a 
convict woman who has lost everything and an indigenous man, an Aboriginal Australian who has lost his people and lost his way of life. These two characters who don't particularly even like each other and putting them in this odyssey through the Australian outback, through the Tasmanian outback and having them find ways to connect with each other and see each other's humanity. This is a movie that is as I've said, it is bleak into another dimension. It is so harrowing. It is so vile. But this is a movie about finding the good in people, finding the humanity, finding the, the, the ties that bind us together. Woo! It probably seems like I'm really passionate about this movie, but I am. This feels like Australia's answer to 12 Years a Slave. And it has the technical mastery to back it up. This is a gorgeous looking film, even in its darkest and most horrific of moments. The way it explores the Australian outback, the way it explores the colonial wilderness, this land that has slowly been mined and, and taken away from its original custodians. And I love the way this movie explores that. There's so many Australian films that don't go here. You know, we have a lot of films discussing racism and discussing a lot of the incredibly horrible things in Australia's past and things that are still going on today. But I've never seen any of them tackle it with the ferocity that this movie has. The trio of performances at the centre of this movie are nothing short of staggering. While all three characters are at different ends of the moral spectrum, diving into who they are, what drives them, what made them become who they are is endlessly fascinating and oh so compelling thanks to just how glorious these performances are. They really, really get under the skin of the characters right into the bloodstream. You can feel the commitment. You can feel the passion for telling this story bleed through those roles and it comes through every other performance in the film as well as every other technical aspect. Do I think the film feels somewhat looser towards its conclusion? Yes, but I don't think at any point this movie is aiming to be satisfying or maybe even rewarding as an experience. What this movie does so beautifully is not offer any clear answers. I found myself at first walking out of this movie and going, what is it actually saying about violence, about its point of origin, about how it spreads, how hatred spreads, how we are losing empathy. What is it actually saying about those things? And over time, I realized if it made specific standpoints, you wouldn't think about it. It would be tied up into a neat little bow and you'd be able to package it away in your mind and not think about it again. But because this movie has so many cycles and vicious loops with how it constructs this vile reality that it exists in. That is the reason it's staying in my mind. And that is the reason I feel right now that I'm champ championing this movie so much. It really is a staggering achievement. It really is an essential Australian film. It is not easy to watch. I can't imagine myself going back to it anytime soon, but I'm so, so glad that I went there in the first place because this is a story that needed to be told and it needed to be told this way. So all I have to say is to Jennifer Kent and the entire team that worked on this film, thank you so much for going there. So those were my incredibly passionate thoughts on The Nightingale. Have you seen it yet? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you like this video? Well, of course you did. You can subscribe to Breaking Banter down there somewhere as well as my other channel, Loverboy, over there somewhere. You can also follow me on Twitter at Loverboy Media. And if you really, really, really want to help support this channel, you can support on Patreon. Thank you so much for everyone who is doing that already. I really mean it. It means the world to me and I guess I'll see you all in the next video.